Today we'll be creating this fun painting. It's created with gouache paint and it's on a timber painting board. So let's get into it. For this project, we'll be using a 40 by 50 centimeter wooden painting board, an acrylic palette, a 12 pack set of gouache paint, a gouache brush set, and some white textured gesso. Watercolour paper is usually the most common support for gouache, but a smooth wooden painting board yields great results too. The first step is to seal the board, and we do this with gesso applied with a wide hog bristle brush. If you would like a smooth surface, you can apply multiple coats of gesso, allowing each coat to dry. Then sand it, then apply the next coat, and so on. I personally prefer a little bit of texture. While that's drying, we can start the next step. This is the outline of the scene that you can find on our website. I've printed it out to A3 sizing and shade the backside with a 6B pencil. We can then flip our outline sheet and place it shaded side down onto the gessoed board and use some tape to hold it in position. We use a sharp 2H pencil to retrace all of those lines. Remove the sheet and refine any elements at this point. It is very important not to make the lines too dark, however. If the lines are too dark, they will be visible under that paint when you apply it. I actually made this mistake. It's not the end of the world, just be mindful of it. Once the outline has been transferred, we can start painting. For guidance on the colours to lay in, you can refer to the last image on our website. This will be a dirty apricot colour transitioning to a blue-grey. To create this tone, I mix vermilion, titanium white, yellow ochre and a touch of Prussian blue. I only roughly mix it on the palette and do most of the mixing on the board. This way there is some texture within the coat. I mix more Prussian blue into the mix and apply it onto the bottom portion of the board. I have found to get two colours of gouache to transition, they need to be wet and the blend happens easiest if you make gentle circular movements with the brush. Once the background is in, we can move to the girl's face. A nice skin tone can be created from titanium white, vermilion, yellow ochre with a touch of burnt sienna. Mix up the light tone, a middle tone and a dark tone onto the palette. The basic order to follow is to lay down the dark areas first, then apply the mid-tones followed by the light highlight areas. Once the face is in, we can paint the lips with crimson and a touch of titanium white. The eyes can then be painted in. The hand can be handled the same way as the face regarding rendering, again by laying on the dark tone first, and then the lighter tones and the highlight areas. To paint the tigers, we lay the white areas on first. The white areas are clearly marked in the outline, so it should be easy to see where to put the colour on. Don't worry if you go over the line work, as you should still be able to see it beneath the coat. Once the white is on the face, we can paint the white on the chest area. The orange tiger's coat can be created with vermilion and yellow ochre. We start with the face and lay the light orange areas on first, starting with the nose. To create any areas in highlight, a touch of titanium white can be added. I create a soft transition from the light orange to the darker orange and softly blend with a hog bristle brush. Once we're happy with the face, we can lay some of the darker orange tone into the body. I blend the white up to the orange. To create a soft transition between colours, you may have to reapply some of the white so that you can recreate the blend. The nose can be painted in with a pink created from crimson and titanium white, and the eye can be painted with yellow. Now we can start to add the black markings to the face. 
Like the rest of this project, it is quite stylized and the stripes around the face are basically triangular. Work across the tiger and lay the stripes in over the body. Once we are happy with the top tiger, we can move on to the bottom tiger following the same steps. The hair has been simplified as well and is laid in with straight vermilion. After the hair, I lay in Tiger Girl's coat. Initially, I laid the coat on with Prussian blue and felt the colour didn't really harmonise that well with the other colours in the work so I instead painted it black. The final step is to lay some branches into the scene. This adds some interest into the plain area of the background. I flip the screen as I find it easier to paint a thin line that moves down the canvas. The colour can be created from black, Prussian blue and white. And this is a fairly neutral grey. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this project. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time.